ladies and welcome to Wild Waiting Series. My name is Fikayo Adinka and if this is the first time you're tuning in, I want to say a big welcome and thank you for watching. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button so you can always get the notifications of my weekly videos. And this is a very special series we've started. I'll be taking us through teachings from my own experience and from the Word of God on how to identify and handle and overcome spiritual marital delay because nothing is going to stop your miracle this year in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we started last week and I told you my story how um, the Lord, you know, delivered me and killed the spirit husband. And that happened via the Word of God. And once again, I'm saying that the Word of God, the Word of God is the solution. You don't need to be fearful. You don't need to run around. You only need to settle down with the word. So what I want to do today is to take us through um, what life was like for me after my deliverance up until when I met my husband. All right. So immediately, like I told you, the word of God came like bullets and was hitting. May 2010 was hitting the spirit husband. I saw that scripture come alive. That when about Jesus said, the words I speak to you are spirit and life. They are actually spirit and life. It was hitting the spirit husband until he fell and died. So the, that morning, like I said in my last video, I had two calls. And from there, I started having plenty of people flock around me. As in, I felt good. I felt happy. I felt alive. I felt beautiful, you know. I was feeling very, very happy. You know, and this prayer point changed. We stopped praying and saying, Father, bring the person. We started praying, Father, help us to know who the person is. Give us a discerning spirit. My mentor and I started praying and believing God to lead us aright. Because indeed, it has never happened. I've never had it that way. Because one of the manifestations, one of the things that would happen if you are sure, because we're going to talk about being sure that what is happening to you is... Um, and it's, it's an affliction from the spirit husband. You have to be sure. You can't make assumptions. So one of the things that was happening was that there was nobody coming. I've never been in any serious relationship. There's been nobody that actually come up to me to say, point as in, Fikayo, I like you. I want to go out with you. I want to get married to you. Never happened before. So um, people started coming. I started having a lot of guys around me. And um, I like to say that immediately I got delivered, the good, the bad guys ran to me. So, my number one point, you still need the Holy Spirit. You still need the Holy Spirit. We won't, I didn't say because, ah, I've been delivered, so I don't need the Holy Spirit. I can do things on my own. No, that won't work. It's the Holy Spirit all through. I remember one particular guy who called me. He showed interest, and I was so excited. I thought, maybe this is it. I, initially, I became anxious. I became very anxious because I was thinking, ah, I've been delivered. I should get married in like a month. You know, I should get married immediately. The person should just come. But it didn't happen that way. I had to wait another one year, seven months before I met my husband. So the initial set of guys that came were not the people. They were not, they were not meant for me. But I kept on checking. There was this particular guy that asked me out on a date. And guess what? The guy didn't come. The guy didn't show up. He stood me up. I was waiting at the particular place we're supposed to meet for hours. I left home. I think I, I left home and annoyed. But that was... It was very clear to me that he wasn't the one. So after that, there was another guy that was introduced to me. That one would send poems every morning, 6 a.m. I would see, you know, and the moon is something and the stars in your eyes are something, something and all sorts of, you know, um, words. But he was just sending me poems, he wasn't saying anything. Then I think I had a dream. In the dream, he was pretending as if, he would pretend as if he's sleeping. When I turn away from him, he will wake up and be doing activities. When I look at him, he will fall asleep again until I caught him. And I said, why are you pretending you are sleeping when you are not sleeping? You know? So that was, from that dream, it was obvious to me that he certainly wasn't the one. Um, another thing that happened after my deliverance um, was that I didn't stop praying. I didn't stop taking my communion. I didn't stop studying the word. I was doing everything I was doing before. It's important you stay there. You keep doing what you're doing and not stop doing it because you feel you're okay. No, you stay with Jesus. It's Jesus all the way. And you know, another thing that happened is the Holy Spirit was speaking more. You know, I, I, he was speaking more and more to me. He would tell me, do this, don't do this. I remember there was, um, um, I didn't stop going to church. I didn't stop attending Singles Fellowship of the Fountain of Life Church. I was still a Foursquare member. I was still... Uh, with my local church, Foursquare, which I grew up in, 
but you know like i said in my book i had um come across the singles fellowship the fountain of life and i was always going so even after my deliverance i didn't stop going in fact there was a particular time the holy spirit told me Fikayo, be more conscious about the way you look even when you go for for um the singles fellowship when you go for this evening program because you know i'll just go now but i was just most of i'm coming back from work so i'm tired so i just go with my hair flying everywhere my shoes dirty you know i would have changed my shoes and put on something else but i started after i heard that instruction i became more conscious so i wasn't wearing full makeup oh, you know no that's not it but I, at least i was more conscious that hey i'm ready to meet someone and guess what i actually met two people around that time you know, there was one day we were asked to, Pastor Kule, God bless you. There was one day we were asked to get up and move around and just say hello to someone. And I did. And I met someone and we became friends. Even though we didn't get married, I met someone. And there was another particular guy I met. We didn't get married to, but at least I met two people. So like a year after my deliverance, I finally met someone that I decided to give a consideration to. So my mentor and I, we prayed and we just, okay, let's, let's be friends. We started by being friends. So after one month, I realized this was not it. And that's another point. I did not say that, okay, well, because I've been waiting and I've been believing God, and I, I was um, maybe 31, I can't remember precisely how old then, so I would just jump at anyone, no. So I still had to maintain my dignity, maintain my pride. I still had to keep the vision of the kind of man I want ahead of me and walk with the Holy Spirit all through. So... I cut off that relationship. It was, it was, it looked like it. It really looked like it, but something was, I had this check in my spirit. I knew something was wrong, so I cut it off and I just went back waiting. And I had to go back into rest. So I, I told you I was anxious initially. So I went back into rest and I just relaxed. So I said, Father, take control. At least people are coming, so take control. So some months, um, I saw, I, I ended that friendship around August and by, the following year, January, I met my husband. So let me give you the gist of how I met my husband. Was when I got delivered. So by December of that year, I got this instruction as I was praying one early morning. You know, I, like I told you, I had to. You have to keep praying, keep being at the feet of Jesus. I woke up two a.m. morning and I was praying, and I heard it was as if somebody spoke into my ears. I heard while waiting, and I started writing down the things that were pouring into my spirit, man. The following day, I ran to my mentor and I showed her that I heard something. You know, I heard something called while waiting, and they said it's a ministry for women. Mature women above 30, me that don't have somebody. How can I now gather people and be talking about marriage? I don't even have a relationship. And she was just looking at me and said, Fika, do you know what? That's an assignment from God. You have to do it. And we are starting next month. I just went to see her in December and she was talking about January. I ran away. In fact, we wanted us to start that December, but I was like, January. I ran away from her. She kept on until we finally started 2011. We started while waiting. I were like eight of us. And I just got, I got, I got passionate about it. I got um, fully involved and nothing was happening, but people were coming. People were coming in. So by May 2011, the lady that finally introduced me to my husband, Bola Ojema Kide, I love you so much, darling. She joined the ministry by May. So are you following me? Sometimes after your deliverance, there will still be a journey. There will still be a process you need to follow through with the Holy Spirit. So I was delivered. I got, got to hear by while waiting, I started, a particular lady had to come. And that, that month, Pastor Mary fired me from the Fountain of Life, came to minister to us, and Bola joined. And that was it. We became friends. And by the end of the year, that 2011, another instruction came. This time, I was at work. I wasn't even praying. I was working on my system at work, and I had, have a dinner. Because we're supposed to be a year old, have a dinner, make it big, get a haul. 
the specifics were clear. Get a hall, let me as in dinner dressing. People should be properly dressed for dinner. You know, get guy, mature single guys and ladies. Now the Holy Spirit said guys and ladies. Remember before the ministry is just for women, but for that dinner, he said guys and ladies. You know, and we just started planning, you know, planning, planning started. The dinner was scheduled for January 2012. Then one day we were in my house, Bola was there with a lot of my other sisters from the ministry. We were planning the dinner and I just said jokingly, please everybody call your friends or call your male friends or you know this dinner has to be balanced, we need guys to come. And she picked up her phone and I didn't know she was calling my husband right in my living room. And that was how my husband attended the dinner. So in um, 2012 we had the dinner, my husband walked into the dinner. I didn't even see him. I just knew that that day, the Holy Spirit was instructing me again, wear this dress, wear that shoe. I was feeling this dress, can wear it. You know, before then, I told me, fix that hair. There's one particular hair. You know when you buy something, you're keeping it. Fix that hair. It's time to fix that weave on. You know, this and that. And I didn't know somebody actually walked in that had seen me, that had, that actually liked me. So a day after, brother called me. I was like, somebody likes you. Somebody has seen you. Somebody's interested in you. And that was how the journey started. Two weeks after, we started talking. And gradually, we went on the first date. Can you see the picture of our first date? And I went on the first date. And that was how the whole story started. And this is the manifestation of the work with the Holy Spirit today. And, um... What am I trying to say in all I've said? I'm trying to say, share with you that, number one, even after your deliverance, you might still have to walk through the Holy Spirit. It might still, it might still have you wait. I waited one year, seven months before I eventually met my husband. Remember I said I didn't stop praying, I didn't stop fasting, I didn't stop taking the Holy Communion. I was still confessing the word. I stayed on it. And um, I, I had to... Keep listening to the Holy Spirit for instructions. If I had to be more attentive, because even after your deliverance, the instructions will come. The miracle you're waiting for will most definitely come via an instruction. You know, and that's why you need to understand how the Holy Spirit speaks with you. You know, when we get to I'm um, talking about the place of the Holy Spirit in this journey. I'm sure you would, you would, we would learn more. So you need to understand how the Holy Spirit works with you. Then I didn't settle and manage any guy that came my way. That. Uh, let me just manage him. At least I've been waiting all this while. Let me manage this guy like that. No. I stood on what I wanted. I stood on the word of God. I maintained my integrity. I, I kept myself. I wasn't messing around. I didn't decide to start jumping around. She might have been delivered. Let me just start, you know, doing all sorts. No. So you need to stay in God. Stay with the word and do the right things. Then I didn't stop going to church. Too. You know, there are sometimes... We get miracles and we forget God. No, I didn't stop going to church. I didn't stop attending the singles fellowship. Remember I said, I even met two people from there. Even though we didn't get married, but at least I met people there, you know. Um, then I stayed accountable to my pastors. I stayed accountable to my mentors. And finally, I'd like to say something as a round off. Um, Luke 11 talks about um, demons leaving a body. Then they begin to search for where to stay. They search the desert. They look for where to stay. Then if they find no place to stay, they will come back to that same body. They will come around to check. Is there still room? Can I still find a place to stay in that body? That happened to me. Can I give you another gist? Twice or thereabout, I sensed the, whole, the uh, spirit husband come back. I sensed the presence again. But guess what? He couldn't come near. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Most High God was so much around me. He tried but he couldn't. Remember, I was also sensitive. I was also deliberate to do the right things. So imagine if I had forgotten about prayers. I stopped praying, stopped fasting, stopped taking my communion. I was just um, um, probably sleeping around or doing all sorts. Then there will be a room and a, an, an avenue for him to have come back and taken root again. And that time, the short time, they don't even come back alone. They come back with more of their friends. They invite people that, hey, come, there's feast here. There's more room here, but that will not be our portion. I know it's not by power, not by might to stay pure, to stay holy, to stay on the word, to stay believing and confessing faith. But I know it's possible if we ask the Holy Spirit to help us and if we are determined. All right, so that's all for this episode. I hope you've been able to get something. Remember, there's life after your deliverance and you don't stop doing the right things you're doing. From the time the Lord sets you free until when you eventually get married. And can I give you another exciting news? You need to even keep doing what you are doing even in marriage. You keep praying, you keep fasting, you keep trusting God. In fact, you pray more after you get married. 
All right, thank you for watching and let's take our confession scriptures and I'll see you next episode. Bye.